All right, I've been saying I'm gonna make this video for a while now. I was gonna write the article for Blanked, um, but it just would take forever, to be honest with you. So, set up my new fancy pants DSLR. It's the first video on that. Hopefully everything goes good. So, the title is Rat Theory. Um, when I first got into swim baits, it wasn't even, I, that wasn't even on my radar. You know, a lot of people see it as a novelty bait, I feel like. Like, they can just throw it, and it's a rat, and fish will eat it sometimes. But that's not how I've come to feel <coughs> about any rodent bait um, through my experience with them. So, a long time ago, you know, well, not that long ago, but 10 years ago about, um, I was getting, we were interested in the bigger baits to give us a leg up in tournaments. So I started building them. One day at Clear Lake, I seen some, I, don't, I still don't know what it is, but it was, the body was like that. And it was gray. And it was on the north side, shallow by Rodman. And it was swimming in an S pattern um, under the water. And me and my brother-in-law watched it swim by and I didn't even know, I still don't know what it is, but I couldn't believe it. I was blown away. I was, what is that? And why don't I have a lure that looks like that? I thought I was throwing big baits, but that's some big bait shit, you know? So then I come back to the Delta and do my research. Um, and I've always seen minks and muskrats, but then you start realizing that, you know, those are um, water bound rodents. They live around all the time. So um, and most bodies of water, especially if you have creeks and stuff, will have types of rodents like that besides the normal, like, quote-unquote, rat, sewer rat, whatever it is. Um, so when he came back, I built um, a seven-inch wooden rat for the first time. I should have all my rats here, but they're with my shit ready to go. I don't really keep them at home because they're I throw them all the time. So, but there's tons of rats. I'm not here to advertise a toxic rat. Um, so it, it's like an XL size. It's a, it's a big Nez rat, you know, whatever big rat you're seeing, you know, five, six ounces with the tail, like 15 inches. So throw that around a while, um, maybe a week. And then it comes spring. I catch one right at 10, lose one at eight, go out the next day and have the day of my life. Um, lost a mid-teen fish right at the boat because I didn't have a net because I, I wasn't ready to throw huge fish, you know, baits like that. I didn't know the details, you know, but caught eights and sevens and tens and, you know, all within this little span and these fish were coming out and crushing this thing like, like they were really targeting this bait in a way that they would target any other prey item. Not like, oh, what's that? But like they, when they were eating or going to eat this item, um, it was like they did it a hundred times, especially the big fish. So that kind of just starts opening my head up um, to more stuff. I was all about that big rat, and then I came up with this micro mink, and I fished it for a while with different segmenting um, of the body with subpar results. I almost trashed it until I went with this huge lip and then the smaller rear tail, and for some reason that's what triggered more bites. So, and it turned into this fish catching machine, you know. I, I haven't got those alpha bites on it, like those teen bites, um, but I've caught a few over 10 on it, tons in the eight, nine category, they eat it. So, um, all of them work. So my rat theory is kind of like, I, I call it that because I feel like people don't put the time they need to into rats like they would a trout or shad. Most fishermen can tell you all about what trout do, where they live, how they swim, or shad spawn, what temperature, where they go after, graph them, you know, they're in the creeks, they're on the breaks, and then you give them a rat and they just throw it wherever, you know, it's a cool bait or whatever. It's not like that. Like. If you think about it as a prey item, then you can really zone in on where the fish target these items, where they're familiar with them, and all fish are familiar with them. We're on the water for a very short window of the day. 
Fish live there 24 hours a day, their whole life. They see shit that we can only imagine. So if we see a rat running on a branch or on a dock one time when we're out, imagine how many times the fish see that day in and day out. Um, and when it comes to especially largemouth bass, we all know that if there's more than one, um, they'll school up or they'll compete. And we all know that when there's an alpha fish in the area, it does whatever it wants and it eats whatever it wants. There isn't anything that it won't um, shy away from on the right day. And especially in an aquatic river environment, anywhere where you have creeks or stuff like that, or docks, there's tons of squirrels, chipmunks, all that stuff everywhere that lives on docks, man-made structure, you know, that's how I think about it, like where would they be? So as I expanded on this alpha fish thing, I was able to travel a little bit, and I went out to the, the east coast, high mountain lakes, trout fed fisheries where people were, you know, only through this, and I was throwing my 15 inch with tail diving mink and pulling out some of the biggest fish that we seen at the, on the trip. Uh, maybe my execution wasn't right or, uh, you know, the angle wasn't right, day wasn't right, but they were coming out on these rats, you know, and the people that were in the boat were, I think, surprised. I wasn't surprised. And actually one of the best fish I caught of that trip was a five pound spotted bass on the micro mink suspending under an overhanging pine tree. Um, so, and in gin clear water, you know, you can see 40 feet. And the spot came out, positioned on it, set up, and then headshotted it just like it would any other prey item. Um, and, you know, so if you think, that if, you know, if you think it's only certain fisheries that this applies to, no, it's just a, it's just a bite like anything else. It's not going to work every day of the year or every time you go out. But if you apply it correctly, then you can target these alpha fish that know how to eat these rodents that are in their environment. So if you're going to target, so, so if you want to get started, like how I got started, I just broke it down. Where do these things live? On the delta, um, the levees, anytime there's rocks, rats love rocks. Minks have dens in the rocks. Muskrats will be in the rocks or in the mud banks. Um, any fruit trees, blackberries, fig trees, um, anything that these rodents will get up there and eat. Any type of briar, um, it creates that big canopy. Lots of rodents live in there. Um, wood, anytime a rodent can use wood to access down into the water. Minks hunt underwater, muskrats swim underwater. If you pay attention, these animals do not stay on the surface when they feel in danger. Most rodents will dive under the surface to escape danger because when you're a prey item, even fish, you will die if something swoops from above to snatch that ass. And a rodent swimming in the water, I mean, a bird can swoop down and he's done. He's done so. So they know to dive under. And they can also see what's under the water in case there's another predator below that plane of the surface. So they're not scared to get in or go subsurface or fall into the water. They're very well versed. That's why, I mean, they live in a natural habitat. If they were weak, natural selection will weed those dudes out. So when they make it to that larger size, you know, they know how to navigate their, uh, you know, their home. So when I'm out in the water, even if I'm throwing a different bait, if I see something, especially a dock backside, old dock, rundown dock, um, a rundown cove, overhanging brush, if it's raining, if you got high water, and it might be flooding the dens of these rodents or getting in the trees, um, rain really seems to drive rodents out. Um, study the, you know, what these, these animals that live in your area do. You might not have a mink, but if you do, if you study just like you would for prey fish, um, you can find out the things that live in your area, even if it's chipmunks and squirrels that fall in the water on accident. You know, everything drinks water. So they're all going to be within the shoreline sometime. Um, so... When, when the fish target these, it seems like it's either when they're high pressured, I like to use a crank down rat when, when there's a lot of pressure in the area and it gives them something different to look at. Um, or when they're in an uber aggressive feeding mode. Um, 
So it's just like any other reaction meat, but I'll tell you what, these fish will not shy away. If I get a, a follower on a glide bait, it's really hard for me to follow up and catch that fish, even if I go back. But when I go back with this, like a crimp down rat, it's really weighted heavy and really creep it through the water, subsurface, that's my best follow-up bait. They, it's like they don't shy. I, think, I don't think it's because they don't see it. I think it's because it's natural. Rat even, uh, rodents even have feet that hang down and look like treble hooks. I mean, put a little patch of rubber on the back hook because a lot of times they'll target that back hook. I'll go into that in a minute. But make it look natural just like you would um, any other bait. So when you have the right habitat and you can locate that and you get the conditions, then you just want to make that natural presentation. So on the surface, if you've ever seen a rodent swim, they don't swim all wacky and aggressive. Of course, you can get bites on an aggressive bait that's shaped like a rat. I'm not arguing that. But even when a squirrel falls in, they put their head up and they, and they swim like a dog. Their tail is straight. They don't have a super wide, aggressive swim. Um, so with my rodent baits, I like the head to be kind of subtle, just a subtle tail wag. Some of my personal baits, a lot of them don't even wag because I want that super subtle presentation, super natural. But the best is a little tail wag, um, in my opinion, just a, nat a more natural swim with a little vibration and stuff because, you know, you want to attract the fish. Um, and then you want to present it in a way that the fish would be used to seeing this, especially if they could pin it against something. They really appreciate that with this style bait because there's a few ways that they'll eat this, a, a rat I found. The really big fish on a big rat will grab it sideways like this, like from the back or the belly, T-boned almost, and shake it like a shark. And when you get that bite, it'll be aggressive, they'll yank it, and then you'll feel aggressive head shakes. Um, and then a lot of times almost slack because they're shaking and then they don't know what to do and they almost turn into a wet sock. So you really gotta stay on a rat eater and make sure you keep that pressure. Even when the head state shakes stop, you gotta keep grinding a little bit without pulling too hard to make sure they stay pinned. Another super, um, uh, how should I say this? A bite that happens a lot, another bite that happens a lot is when you're swimming it, they'll come up and they'll just grab that rear treble hook. Like they just pin it between their lips, it's crazy. And I, I started wondering why they did this. Jesus Christ. So I started wondering why they did this. The more I watched, when fish are, are smaller, anything in their environment, a little bass, small bass will attack everything. They want to know what's going on. Fish will go up and grab that rear, the feet of a surface swimming rodent or one that they want to position on, grab that the feet and pull it down um, into a state of panic because it's not, it's no longer swimming forward. So it's in a defensive mode and it's in a, you know, they pull it down, it's disoriented and they can position on it to get a head shot or to crush the head because you're, I don't think that a bass is really just gonna tangle with the big rat without injuring it first because I imagine a rodent could just chew out, honestly. They have some big teeth. So when, so when these fish eat them and get them into the crushers, they really think about the way they're positioning on them. Not like a novelty bait. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They've done it before. They've messed with rodents since they were juveniles. And I think that rear treble grab is the foot grab that they've developed over the years when they were smaller and couldn't just really whack at it. So besides the shark and the foot grab, the other bite I get is when they just inhale it. And I think when they inhale it, the big fish, they're inhaling it and crushing it and trying to spit it out. I hate hooking old big fish in the skin of their mouth because it comes out. I'd rather have it in the bone. Um, I think as they get older, that skull plate gets thicker and thicker. And even with the frog, I know from frog fishing, when you stick them in the roof, small fish, you could brain them. It'll go through their nostril, even their eyeball. You won't see that happen with the big fish because they have that big skull developed. It just hooks that skin in the roof of their mouth and they can pull out. So when they breathe it in, 
I've seen it happen. I've lost some big ones where you're reeling, reeling, and they come up and you see it in their mouth and they're shaking and you can see it slipping out. So I think when they're doing that, either they're crazy and huge and they're just gonna let their crushers handle the work or they're breathing it in to crush it and spit it out and crush it and spit it out how people, I'm sure you've seen small mouth or spotted bass do that on video. So my main thing with, I guess the rat theory is all about is these aren't just a bait that you throw at a city park or something on the surface because it's cool and has a tail and wiggles. If you really break these rodents down and apply them in a natural way like you would a trout bait or anything like that, um, you, you will target the alpha fish in the body of water that you're fishing. Anytime they're up shallow, if you have the right habitat, you could have the day of your life, you catch the biggest fish of your life. I've hooked and lost the largest fish of my life a couple times on road of base and caught them also. Plenty of fish over 10, um, and I'm no sage fisherman. You know, there's a lot of guys with a lot of talent that I'm sure can do a lot more damage than I have. But if you really break the rodent bite down at your lake, analyze what they're doing, where they're living, and apply it at the right times, I think you can catch the largest fish of your life. And I live by that. If, uh, if I didn't make lures, if I didn't make toxic baits, and I was a trophy bass fisherman only, it would be hard for me to put a large rodent bait down 90% of the year. What, you know, when they hibernate, I guess it's not natural to throw that, but everywhere I've gone, if you stick to it, it's a true stick to it and find out where the biggest fish are. If you do that, you will locate and maybe get a shot at catching the biggest fish in the area. So, I mean, if I was gonna fish for food, I'd throw the micro mink, cause I could guarantee bites on that almost every day. So, if you're uh, new to rat baits, or if you think it's just a surface lure, or a wake bait, uh, maybe get on it, try something new. Try cranking it down. Uh, I like mine to suspend. I know that's crazy, but um, it's worked a couple times for me. So thanks for watching.